Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, so I am in the shading tab and I have a basic material applied to the entire TV. So if I turn on viewport shading using cycles, then basically, basically you can see that the entire sort of monitor is that sort of black material. So what we want to do is assign a different material to the area that's going to be the screen. So first, I'm gonna go over to the materials tab on the right and add a new slot for where that material is going to be and then press new. Over in my main area, I'm gonna press tab to enter the editing mode and I'm selecting the face that represents the screen. So obviously you can uh, switch from vector, edge and face selection. So I'm selecting that face. And then over here where it says material, I'm going to click assign. And that's gonna assign that material to just that face. I can also double click it to rename it. So I will do. And then we can press tab to come out of edit mode, back into object mode. We've got the material selected that we want to edit, that screen. So what I'm gonna do is actually delete all of this, the principal shader and the material output. Then I'm gonna press Shift A and search for light. Uh, and I want the light output. Then I want a Voronoi texture and a white noise texture and a color ramp. Now these three are going to form the actual white noise itself. So we're going to plug the color ramp into the surface, the value from the white noise into the factor of the color ramp, and the position from the Voronoi texture into the vector of the white noise. Now you can see it's given us this weird um, kind of, not octagonal, but jaggedy pattern. So we want to really create the kind of pixelated look of a screen. So we're gonna drop the randomness on the Voronoi texture all the way down. That gives us kind of a patchworky effect. Then we're going to increase the scale, let's say to 100 for now, so you can still see what's happening. And you can see we've kind of got that sort of white snow effect that you get on TV monitors when there's no input, or at least it used to. These days you probably just get a blank screen asking you what source input you want. Anyway, so that we can animate this, we're going to change the white noise texture from 3D to 4D. And we've also got control about uh, of the contrast between the pixels by using the slider on the color ramp. So I'm gonna jack that up a bit. And also I'm just gonna change the color very, very slightly on the white element of this, just that it's within that sort of blue screen emissions um, thing. Okay, so that is the white noise itself. Let's put a frame around that by pressing Shift P, if you've got the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. Uh, uh, and we'll call that white noise. Now, part of the title of this was the fact that this would be illuminated. So basically we want light to come out of uh, that screen and sort of hit surfaces elsewhere. So that's why we chose the light output. But we need to create that emitter. So we're going to grab a light path node 
we're going to grab a light fall off node and we're going to grab a math node. So if I just, oops, no, not that. Go away, delete. So if I plug this in to the surface right now, we'll basically lose the white noise, but we can mix them back in a minute. You can already see there's some sort of cast off from this screen. Now we're gonna leave that at add and we'll make some other changes. We're gonna take the quadratic value from the light fall off into the top value of the add and boom, that's already cranked up the emission. But we're gonna control that a bit with the ray length from the light path plug that into the smooth value of the light fall off and we'll increase this value on the math node to five now basically we want this to um, match the values that we've got on our white noise so let me just put a frame around this and call it the emitter So what we are going to do is grab a mix RGB, plop it on that connector and connect up the white noise to the top slot and the emitter to the bottom slot. Change the blending mode to multiply and you can see we've got our patterning back and change the factor to 0.1 to bring it down. So now what we have, as you can see here, is basically all that sort of scattered noise uh, that's created by our white noise collection of nodes. Let's just pull that back a bit so we get some grays and things going on in here as well. Um, and we've got the light coming from the emitter and hopefully you can see up here, you can see because this is um, slightly specular or slightly reflective, you can see how the light varies with each of those uh, pixels, which is kind of a, a nice effect. And then basically we've got a nice glow around the base of the screen. So basically any objects that are in front of it, let's just add one, uh, let's add a cylinder. So the cylinder basically blocks the light from the screen. Uh, and also it catches the light from the screen. So that's brilliant. Now I said about animating this, so let's do that. In our layout, we're going to make sure we're at frame one. And in the shading tab, we're going to move our mouse cursor over the W value on the white noise and press I to insert a keyframe. Then we're going to head to the last frame. In fact, actually, I'm going to change this to 240 frames. And we're going to go to frame 241. And we're going to go back, change this value to, let's say, 20. Press enter and then move your cursor back over and press I again to put in uh, the next value. And basically when I press the space bar now to animate this, it will start animating. And you can see that white noise is moving around and it's affecting the light cast from the screen as well. Now, obviously at this resolution, it's not that it's giving quite a uh, pronounced effect, but it will be much more subtle when you render it out. And if I just render this now, what are we on? 128 samples. And there we go, just at 128 samples. That only took 10 seconds. We've got the light casting from the screen. We've got the white noise and we've got basically everything interacting with that light. Now for me, that um, resolution would be way too much. So, come over here and maybe crank it up to 400 and then it's got much um, more detail going on and again it will simply cycle through this value as you animate 
Now, of course, you could loop that in the um, animator, but I will leave that to you to experiment and play with. I hope this has proved useful to you and that you will uh, find a use for it. If you have enjoyed it and you have found it useful, please do remember to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe for future content. In the meantime, thanks for watching.